Hey guys, Alex Bennett here with AgriSpray Drones. Uh, today we're going to do a unboxing video um, along with a removing the Chinese version of the app and installing the US version of the app. Um, then we'll walk through some activations and stuff. We're going to cover kind of everything you guys need to do from unboxing to getting your drone activated, all your apps installed, um, firmware updates and stuff like that. So let's jump right into it. One thing we noticed when we started uh, unboxing some J100s is, is the packing of these drones are very, very nice. Um, high density foam all the way, all the way around the drone. Um, yeah, we've been very impressed on the way our parts are showing up, the batteries are showing up, the drones themselves, packing's phenomenal in these. So we'll go ahead and probably pop this side off. That way you guys can see how it's packed from the side. So yeah, then again, really nice packing. So we'll go ahead and start stripping the drone out. Okay, so inside the box here, um, you basically, we're gonna have our drone this is a four nozzle drone here. Um, we will have our remote controller and everything. And then below the drone, we have our product certificates, our user manuals and everything like that. So that's what comes in the box. Um, all the other accessories, batteries and stuff are, are in separate boxes from there, but this is the main box here. Um, we'll go ahead and get it out. And then we're gonna open the doors, get it outside, and we're gonna start walking through activations and app updates. Okay, so we got the drone outside. Next thing we wanna do is go ahead and take the arm, uh, the arm straps off. We're gonna take the bubble wrap off the propellers and we're gonna unfold the drone. The way to unfold the drone is the nozzle arms go first and then the next arms go last. Then it's the reverse order to fold it up. We're gonna lock those arms in while Mac unfolds the props, I'm gonna go ahead and get a battery. I'm gonna go ahead and put a battery in it now. Um, we are, it is a little rainy and drizzly out, so just to protect those terminals. Um, we're gonna leave it off for now. Next, we're gonna go get the controller and everything out. I'm gonna walk you guys how to uninstall the Chinese app, install the American app, firmware, firmware updates, activations, and everything from there. So let's go. Okay, real quick, I wanna show you guys what comes in this standard package remote. Um, so like we see, kind of like DJI, nice foam case. We have the remote here. Um, if you guys choose to buy the Superlink, this is part of the mounting pole for the Superlink. That comes standard with all the drones. Um, we have our handheld mapping tool here. We have charging cables for the handheld and for the remote. And then they actually, we have an extra set of battery terminals um, for the drone or for your charger. They're both universal. So I just got the, drone, the remote out of the box. Um, it won't turn on. Sometimes um, lithium batteries and stuff, if the battery gets to a low enough state, they basically go into like a lockout mode. Um, so this remote won't turn on right yet. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take it over to the charger that I have plugged into the wall. I'm gonna go ahead and plug that remote in. So now you can see I have some lights lit up now. Now I can go ahead and turn on the remote. So you guys can leave it already plugged in, just let it charge all the way. Um, or if you want, you can go ahead and unplug it and we'll go from there. So we have our startup screen basically right here. Once this gets turned on, we'll go ahead and start screen recording. That way we can walk you through the steps going forward from there. So when you first power on your drone, this is gonna be what you're gonna see here. Um, this is gonna be for in most cases, at least for now until our large orders start coming in, this is gonna be on the Chinese app, um, the Chinese servers and stuff like that. 
Um, we do have the US server and apps and everything are already online. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna uninstall the Chinese app, install the American app. So what I'm gonna do here is I'll click on the screen and we'll hit the square button here. And then we're gonna force close that app. So then from there, this takes us to our Android home screen. I'm gonna go ahead and swipe up there. I'm gonna find the app. I'm gonna push and hold it. After I do that, it's gonna pop up app info. I'm gonna click on that, hit uninstall. Do I wanna wish to uninstall? Okay. So now there's no flight controller app on this screen. Um, we're gonna go ahead and install the American app. First, we wanna go through and check the time, the time zone and the time is correct on the remote and connect to internet. So to do that, we're gonna to go to settings. We're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom. There's a systems here. And you can see on the screen right now, it basically says China standard time. So we're gonna click on that. We're gonna go down to time zone. And right now it's selected time zone automatically. And we're gonna uncheck that. We're gonna click on time zone again. We're gonna set our region. We'll type in United States right there. And then we are in central time zone. So we're gonna basically find Chicago time. Click on that. And now we're good. So now it says my time is 2.27 p.m., which is correct. I'm gonna go ahead and get out of there. And then we're gonna connect to the internet. Okay, now that we're connected to the internet, we're gonna to go to um, Google. And we are gonna put in the new address. Okay, now that we have our address in, we're gonna go ahead and hit go. This will actually not take us to any sort of website. It's gonna basically be an automatic download. So what you're gonna see now, it basically says Chrome needs storage access to download files. So we're gonna hit continue. We're gonna hit allow. And then now we basically see a download file here where it shows it what it is. Um, there is a way to tell that this is the American app. If you see after Smart Ag Pro, it says slash ASD, um, and then 2119 at the end, this is the American app. So we're gonna go ahead and hit download. If we go to the top and scroll down, we're gonna see where this app has downloaded. We're gonna hit the check mark. It base, and then from now we need to set up some set, some settings. So we're gonna go to settings. We're gonna allow this from an unknown app. And then now we're gonna hit install. Once it installs, we're gonna go ahead and hit open. First thing that's gonna pop up is display over other apps. So we're gonna click on the J100 app. We're gonna turn that on. Then we're gonna back out. Then it's gonna ask uh, to use device location. We'll check while using the app. Record audio while using the app. Allow device to have access to photos and media. We're gonna allow that. Okay, so now there's a good way to tell again, you know, if it says, thank you for choosing us ASD, this is the American app. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and log in. There's basically a CRM app that everyone will have access to. Um, from that app, this is where you'll go ahead and create your own accounts. Um, that way you have an account already made where you can log into the app. And then after we log in, it's basically gonna want us to turn on, allow access to all files. Log in successfully. Now it's running the cache app basically. So if I had a already account that I've been flying on another drone, this is basically gonna pull all the data on my account already and automatically import it to this remote. Okay, after it's done that, we're gonna select done. Now this takes us to our home screen. So the very first thing we wanna do is set our units of measurement and everything. So from there, we're gonna to go to settings, data count, and this is where we change our units of measurement. Once that's set, I'm gonna go ahead and back out. Okay, we're gonna turn the drone on, get it connected to the remote, and then we'll start walking through activations and updates. 
while the drone's starting up, we're gonna go ahead and wait for the drone to get connected to the controller. Um, if for some reason the drone does not connect to the controller, there is a Knowledge Hub video on how do we link the drone and the remote together on the controller. But for now, so we basically know we have connection. Um, it's gonna go through its boot up phase right now. As you can see, it's starting to load up. Um, it's gonna basically said that air said it was failed to connect to RTK. We are not connected to RTK. That's why it's saying that. So we're gonna give it a couple more minutes. We're at the stage now that we're basically gonna go ahead and activate the drone. So to activate the drone, the drone does have to be outside. Um, when we hit the activation button, it does geo-reference the drone to make sure it's in the right country of origin. So from there, we're gonna go to devices. And then the very first one is UAV. So uh, we can see at the top, here's our UAV name. That is the serial number of your drone. Uh, next, next one down there is from activation status. So we're gonna go ahead and hit activate. Okay, now our drone's activated. While we're doing the activation, I like to just, in my mind, I'm gonna go down to RC real quick. I'm gonna hit activate there. Now our RC is activated. So we're gonna go back to UAV. Now we're gonna start looking for firmwares. So there's four firmwares in a row that we need to look for to see if they're current or if we need to activate. First one here is just firmware version. We're gonna hit upgrade. As you can see on the remote, we basically, it says current right now. Um, so that means the, the drone already has the latest and current firmware of, for the drone. So we're gonna go ahead and exit out of that. Next one down is spray upgrade package. We're gonna hit upgrade. Now it says latest. So it says latest and not current. So that means this is the newest firmware, but we have not upgraded to it. So we're gonna go ahead and hit upgrade. This upgrade here will take uh, five to seven minutes, somewhere around in there. Um, basically the firmware request goes to the CPU and then the CPU distributes it to every nozzle at a time. So this process does take a little bit. Um, bear with us. Once this is updated, we'll move on to the next one. You will hear some errors in the background of this. Um, it's completely normal. It's basically just the CPU and other components of the drone turning on and off. So if it starts saying errors, it's okay. All right, so now our upgrade is completed. Um, it's basically prompted me to restart the drone. Um, if this was the only upgrade you guys were doing, um, this would be the time to go ahead and restart the drone. Since we know there's gonna be other updates, um, we're gonna go ahead and push those before we do a final restart. So I'm gonna close that. Next one down is gonna be radar package. We're gonna select that. Then again, it just says latest and not current. So that means we need to upgrade. We know there's another firmware to firmware to push through now so we'll go ahead and close that one back out now we're going to go to motor upgrade package then again it just says latest and not current so that means we need to upgrade from there we're going to go ahead and walk over to the drone um, confirm that the exterior battery is shut off and then we'll walk through the steps to shut down the internal so basically from now I can confirm that it did shut down my external battery. Um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, turn off the internal. To do that, we're gonna exit out. We're gonna hit the normal button here. Um, it's basically wanting me to activate my battery. Right now, since the battery's not on, I'm gonna say activate not now. Um, when your battery is on, it will prompt you to activate every new battery you have. It's very simple, activate now. It'll take you to the battery tab, activate. We're gonna go top right corner into flight settings and then you can see at the very top we have it says turn off and it's illuminated red if this battery is on this will be grayed out this only illuminates red when the external battery is shut off so if i'm going to go ahead and click on that i'm going to confirm backup shutdown now we have a 40 second countdown timer um, for the internal battery and the cpu to go ahead and shut down it's very important when you're doing updates to um, updates or if you're trying to do any sort of reset on the drone. Um, always please remember that this drone does have an internal battery. So make sure we get that internal battery shut down to do a full reboot. So now our internal battery is shut down. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and restart the drone to reset everything and we'll confirm that our uh, firmware updates did take. So drone's on. We'll return back to our home screen. 
And then now we'll basically wait for the system to be ready. So after the drone, um, we confirmed all the firmware is on the drone. We're gonna move down to RC. Um, we're gonna do the RC upgrades underneath devices and underneath RC. The ROM, uh, there will not be an upgrade for that, so you don't have to worry about it. Um, then we're gonna skip down to the bottom one just to show it real quick. So this is image transition module. If I hit that, basically we are on current, so I don't have to worry about that. The next one is the actual firmware of the controller. We're gonna hit upgrade and it says latest. Um, so this is basically gonna prompt me to upgrade. We're gonna shut down the screen recording real quick um, and then we'll upgrade it. Um, we're gonna let it go through the upgrade process. When it is complete, it will shut down the drone, um, the, the RC remote, and then turn back on. Um, and then we'll come back from there to talk about that a little bit farther. So yeah, as we shut down the screen record, as you can see, so now we're doing the firmware update on the remote. Um, it's just, we'll just let it go through its process and then from there we'll be able, be able to see the RC actually shut down and turn back on. All right guys, so basically we just got done with the firmware update of the RC. Um, the remote did shut down. Once this drone gets booted up or the remote gets booted up, we'll go ahead and uh, start screen record again to go through the rest of the steps. Our remote's booted back up. We're back to our login page. Screen recording is back on. We're gonna go ahead and log back into our account once we do that, it's going to basically prompt us to do allow access again because we have restarted the whole system. Log in successfully. Okay, so now it's telling me to do a couple things here. Um, it basically says there is a new firmware available update now. Um, currently, right now, the new firmware is going to be a beta firmware, so please do not update that. Um, it is a work in progress still. Once that is is stable and we know everything works we'll we'll go ahead and let everyone know to upgrade so for now we're just going to check off of it all right so now it wants us to do a rocker calibration so we're going to hit confirm start calibration we're just going to go all the maximum all the way around this won't basically stop unless we just let go and then we hit next calibration successful so we'll go ahead and back out of there there's one last thing we need to do to this drone before we get it in the air. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get back into normal here. And if you see right here in this top right corner where our tank icon is, it basically has a question mark in it. Um, this is because we need to do a weight calibration tear on this. Um, I'm gonna have Mac help me real quick. We're gonna walk through this process. So top right corner in our flight settings underneath spray, we have tank weight calibration. So I'm gonna ahead and click on that. I'm going to have Mac go ahead and we're going to raise the tank a few inches off the weight sensors. Okay, so Mac has the base of the tank lifted off the weight sensors. We're going to hit reset weight. It's going to give us a five second countdown timer before we're going to drop that tank back on. Weight reset successfully. Okay, so now I'm going to have Mac go ahead and set the tank back down. Empty, of course. And we're gonna hit start tear. Tank tear succeed. The tear weight 4, so basically we are it is successful tear calibration. Now if we go to this top here, now you can see our question mark went away. We have 0%, 0.0, 0 gallon. So now we're ready to fly. Thanks.